Hello, friends. My name is Daniel Fontenot, and welcome to Jewels of Truth. Let us pray and ask the Lord to guide us as we study His Word. Our gracious and holy Father in heaven, we bow before you and acknowledge that thou art the author of thy word. And Lord, as we take up again the study of the book of Revelation, please guide us by thy Holy Spirit into all truth. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear thy voice speaking to us. This is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. And Lord, thou hast said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And Lord, we believe the time is at hand when Christ will come the second time with power and great glory. So help us to understand that and appreciate uh, that very fact and help us, O Lord, to order our lives accordingly. Guide us, we pray, in our study. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome again to Jewels of Truth. Okay, we're still on the subject there of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 which states, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So, the name of this study being, Behold, he cometh with clouds on the third day. You may be wondering, what does he mean by the third day? Well, as we continue this study, you will understand. So, <clears throat> every eye shall see him on the third day. Okay? Every eye shall see him on the third day. The third day is a symbol of the third angel's message. And I'm saying that simply because that you have the third angel's message. Okay? The number three in the Bible, I would say always, no, the number three always, in some way, fashion, in some way, form, or fashion, represents the third angel's message. The third angel's message is in Revelation 14, 9 through 12, and the third angel followed them. Okay, so you have two just prior to that angel. The third angel followed the two, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And notice that we have a statement from the Australian Union record of July 28, 1899. The third angel's message is to prepare a people to stand in the day of the Lord. Okay, so let's look at now the last in our last study we read a passage from Patriarchs and Prophets that uh, ad addressed and described the, the events surrounding the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. Okay, so uh, in conjunction with that, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 19, verses 9, 9 to 25, and then later we'll go through Revelation 20. Uh, but for now, let's, let's look at uh, Exodus 19, verses 9 to 25. This is the events just prior to Christ giving his law. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. Okay. What? When, when Christ comes the second time, is he coming in on a thick cloud? Yes. That the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever, 
And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against when? The third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Now, this may be difficult for some of you to understand and to accept, but it's a lot more simple, and please don't read anything more into what I'm saying than what, than what I'm saying here. This is, this is a prefiguring of the second coming of Christ. And when Christ returns to the earth, it will be during the giving of the third angel's message. Actually, all three messages, and not only the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, 6 through 12, but also that other angel, which is in Revelation chapter 18, that angel which, light, that, that angel which lightens the whole earth with, with his glory. Okay? All of these messages will be fulfilled, will ultimately be fulfilled during the day of the Lord, during the time of the Sunday, from the time of the Sunday law crisis all the way to the second coming of Christ. But emphasis on the third angel's message, because it is, because see, the, just prior to that, the first and the second angel's messages will, will, uh, will have been given. But at this but at the height of the third angel's message and the, and the fulfillment of it, the powers of earth will endeavor to force all the inhabitants of the earth to uh, receive the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. They will be, the inhabitants of the earth will be forced to honor Sunday, the sign of the papacy in their foreheads or in their hands, okay? And again, it is during that time period that Christ will come in the sight of all the people. Because as we saw in our last study, the second coming of Christ is just a representation, I'm sorry, I meant to say, the, the events when Christ uh, gave his law on Mount Sinai, there in Exodus 19 and Exodus 20, they'll, those events represent, or you might as well say, they are a symbol of the events surrounding Christ's second coming, again on the third day. And, and we are to be ready, as it says in verse 11, we are to be ready against the third day. The third angel's message for the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. Remember Revelation uh, 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 chapter 1 and verse 7 says, Every eye shall see him. The third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 4, uh, tells us, And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. It's going to seem like I'm changing the subject here, but I'm not. And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took, his, took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on what? On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place. What place? The place where he was to sacrifice Isaac his son there on Mount Moriah. He saw the place afar off. What you could what I'm putting here in the study, I'm 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 even though we're looking at Exodus nineteen verses nine to twenty five, you will notice, pay attention, that 
as we, as we go through uh, Exodus chapter 19, I'm going to break into chapter uh, 19 of Exodus and put some verses that would comment, you might say, on Exodus 19. And this is one of them. You know, Abraham lifted up his eyes on the third day and saw the place where he was to sacrifice Isaac on the third day. So what happened with Christ? Matthew 16, 21, over and over again, the Lord uh, Jesus told the disciples he would be raised again the third day. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go up, go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Okay, he, he rose the third day. Matthew 17, 23, And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorrow, sorry. Matthew 20, 17, to 20, 17 through 19, And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Now, even though Jesus rose on the third day, prophetically the third day represents all the, of the events at the end of the world in which God's people will be persecuted, quote-unquote crucified, okay, they will be persecuted, but ultimately on that, quote-unquote, third day, they will, they will be raised again in newness of life. They will be raised again at the resurrection, the final resurrection of the righteous. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Matthew, yeah, I mean, Mark chapter 9, verses 31 and 32. For he taught his disciples... And said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. And just as Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, God's people will be raised from the dead on the third day. Third day, prophetically speaking. Mark 10 Verses 32 to 34, And they were on the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And he, and he took again the twelve, and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles, and they shall mock him, and, scour and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and on the third day he shall rise again. One thing that probably should be put into the mix of this study. When, because I know some will maybe uh, make this objection, because you had the first day and the second day, you know, the first day Christ was arrested, the second day he, rose, he, he, he uh, uh, rested in the tomb, and on the third day he rose from the dead. Okay? But prophetic, I hope this is not too confusing to, for you, but prophetically speaking, at the end of the world, all three messages, the first, sec, the, first the second, and the third angel's messages, are fulfilled during the giving of of the third angel's message, okay? They're all contained in the third angel's message. Luke chapter 9, verses 18 to 24, And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say ye, whom say the people that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say, Elias. And others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. 
And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Luke 13, verses 31 and 32, The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. And it is during the third day, during the third angel's message, that is, that God's people will be perfected. Luke 18, 31 to 34, Then he took unto him the, twel the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Luke 24, 1 through 9. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, two men, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto him, unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered, and they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told, told all these things unto the, unto the eleven, and all and to all the rest. Luke twenty four, forty five and forty six, then hope opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Because he's saying he they Jesus opened the scriptures, okay, where do you think he went to when he opened the scriptures? He was going to the Old Testament, okay, and said unto them, thus, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. You know, when Jesus told his disciples over and over and over and over again that he was to rise again the third day, he did not just pull that out of thin air, okay? He was saying that because he had already told his people about this in the Old Testament. We'll see that here in just a moment. Acts 10, 38 to 40. <clears throat> How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, and we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, First of all, that which I also received, this is Paul writing, how that Christ died for our sins, what? According to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he, that he rose again 
the third day according to the scriptures. What scriptures? According to the Old Testament. According to the Old Testament, this is not me saying this, the scriptures are saying this, Paul is saying this, He's Paul is saying according to the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, Christ was to rise again the third day. Where do you find that? In the Old Testament scriptures. I submit to you that at one of the places there is Exodus 19. And that's not the only one. Let's continue. Now, <clears throat> I've, I've sort of alluded, it, alluded to this in this study, but I've spoken about these things before in other presentations. The Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1107 says, The scene transacted in Jerusalem... At the betrayal and rejection of Christ represents the scene which will take place in the future history of the world when Christ is finally rejected. The religious world will take sides with the first great rebel and will reject the message of mercy in regard to the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Basically, the, the main reason why I put this statement in this study was to show that just as Christ was betrayed and he was put on trial and he was crucified, the same will happen to God's people. Not necessarily that, that, that they will be crucified, although I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are crucified, but this whole history of Christ, this history of Christ's betrayal, rejection, etc., <clears throat> his even rising from the dead, is all that all represents what will happen to God's people at the end of the world. Uh, notice John 15, 20, remember the word, Jesus said this, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So, just as Christ was persecuted, God's people will be persecuted. Hosea 6, 1 and 2, Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. Two days representing the first and second angel's messages. They are revival, reformation and revival messages. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. The third day represents the third angel's message and it is during the giving of that message at the end of the world, this warning against receiving the mark of the beast and, re and worshiping his image, that we, it is during this time period that we will be persecuted and then finally, you know, he will raise us up. He will take us up into heaven. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. This is the second coming of Christ. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So now we come to the end of all of these verses that speak of the third day and what they mean to us at the end of the world. Now we go back to uh, Exodus chapter 19, and we are on verse 12. And thou shalt, 
and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their robes. They washed their robes just before the giving of the law. And by the way, by the way, and it's not in this study, but I'm a, those of you who have read the book, The Great Controversy, you know that when Christ is about to return in the clouds of heaven, the Ten Commandments are shown in the sky. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments are shown in the sky, okay? So just prior to that, we as God's people are to wash our clothes. Does it mean our literal clothes? It means our garments of character. And we are to sanctify ourselves. We are to allow the truth to sanctify us. Notice Revelation 16, 13 to 16. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth, and what? Keepeth his garments. Same thing as, Rev as Exodus 19, 14. They were told to wash their clothes, their garments. <clears throat> so, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. In other words, he doesn't have the if we're naked, we do not have the robe of Christ's righteousness upon us. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So just prior to the battle of Armageddon, we, to, we are to wash our clothes, okay? Wash our garments of character. Uh, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Joel chapter... 2 verses 15 to 17, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, sanctify the congregation, Exodus 19, 14 says, and sanctify the people, okay, before they are to meet their Lord as he gives his law. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, this is, this is prefigured by the events surrounding the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, lest uh, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Back to Revel, uh, rather, uh, Exodus 19 and verse 15. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Again, they, are, they were told, Be ready against the third day. We are told, Be ready against the third day. Or in other words, Be ready against the third angel's message. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Yes, you will have the voice of the trumpet, the voice of the archangel and the people will, will be trembling. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part of the mount. You know, it, this is... This is, uh, to me, just fascinating to me. How all of this is representing the end of the world when Christ is coming in the clouds of heaven and he shows his people his law. 
that they have crucified. Verse 18, And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. The whole earth is going to quake greatly. Hebrews 12, 25 to 26 tells us, Paul tells us, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we as much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth at the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. At the end of the world, the Lord will not only shake the earth, but also heaven. Verse 19 of Exodus 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Now, if you remember, in our long series there on the prophecies of Zephaniah, we already went through all of this. Okay, I didn't put all of that study. Of course, what, what I'm speaking about, about here is that the third, uh, the, the, the trumpet there represents the third angel's message. If you want a more, a fuller explanation of that, then I would suggest that you go and uh, view that series. I think it's like 19, yeah, 20, 20 parts to the series on the prophecies of Zephaniah. And I don't remember exactly which part it was, but it was around, I'm guessing, around part 16 or 17, maybe 18, something like that, uh, is where we have a fuller explanation of how the trumpet represents the third angel's message. And the third angel's message waxes louder and louder. Okay? And verse 20 of Exodus 19 tells us, And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. <clears throat> and Moses said unto the people, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds upon the mount, about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto, unto him, Away, get thee up, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priest and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So, so Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. Okay, now we come to Exodus 20, verses 1 through 21. Most of, most of this is going to be the giving of the, of the law. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee up. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. Now, as we're, as we're reading this, picture in your mind's eye what Sister White describes in the book, The Great Controversy, where she says that the, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, will be seen, this table, these two tables of the law, they will be seen in the sky, in the heavens, okay? This is what they will see. And it continues, verse 4, Notice, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, that's verse 6. So, it's mentioning that thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Okay? This is prefiguring the warning against the worship of the image of the beast. Okay? We are not to bow down to the image of the beast. 
And notice it says, For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children when? Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He will visit the people, this, the, those who have, re, who have rebelled against his law. He will visit them in the third and fourth generation. But notice here in volume 4 of the Testimonies, page 29, man came from the hand of God perfect in every faculty of mind and body, in perfect soundness, therefore in perfect health. It took more than 2,000 years of indulgence of appetite and lustful passions to create such a state of things in the human organism as would lessen vital force. Through successive generations, the tendency was more swiftly downward. Indulgence of appetite and passion combined led to excess and violence. Debauchery and abominations of every kind weakened the energies and brought upon the race diseases of every type until the vigor and glory of the first generations passed away. And notice, and in the third generation from Adam, man began to show signs of decay. It was in the third generation from Adam that man began to show signs of decay. Successive generations after the flood degenerated more rapidly. We are in the fourth generation. But that degeneration, uh, according to this statement, I'm taking this statement and I am using it in a prophetic fashion and putting it at the end of the world. And whenever I say the end of the world, I don't mean at the very end when Christ comes the second time. It, it leads up to Christ's second coming. But it is in the third generation, however, however, wherever you want to put that third generation, okay, we are in the fourth right now, but wherever you want to put the third just prior, wherever the third generation began, okay, that degeneration began in the third generation. God began to visit the fathers, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. He began in the third, and he ends it in the fourth. Okay, verse 7 of Exodus chapter, nine, uh, chapter 20. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Again, he tells us to remember the Sabbath day. We are not to remember the first day or the sixth day, but the seventh day. This is, again, a warning against receiving the mark of the beast. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw what? The thunders, and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. Is this not a representation of the second coming of Christ? And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. You know, I'm just now thinking here, you know, there are a lot of heresies out there in the world, and some of these heresies involve the end of the world. And whenever these churches, whenever these preachers speak about, you know, the rapture, you know, and all this sort of thing, I, I would encourage all of you to take note of this. Never, never, never do they speak of those events 
when Christ returns in the clouds of heaven, when there's going to be thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the earth shaking and all that sort of thing. They never speak about that. It's only Seventh-day Adventists, those that, are, that believe the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, that speak of such things, that the earth will actually be destroyed. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Those who preach again about the rapture and the false idea of the Antichrist and of the end of the world, they never speak about this. Because the devil hates this, he is terrified at this. Okay, let's continue. And all the people saw the, the thunders and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the, sound, and the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Revelation 18, verses 9 and 10 and 16 through 18 tells us, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and, de and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, this is speaking about Babylon, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, what? Standing afar off for the fear of her torment. When Christ returns in the clouds of heaven, Babylon is going to be burned up, and the people will be standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. This is what they said at at, Mount, at, at the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. <clears throat> In verse 20 of Exodus chapter 20, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, again it says it, and the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. So, behold, he cometh with clouds on the third day. Are we getting ready against that day? Are we getting ready for the third angel's message to be fulfilled? If you agree with this, presentation done, then by all means tap that like button so that this presentation can be sent far and wide to those who are hungering for truth. And if you haven't subscribed, I would highly encourage you to subscribe if you desire the truth and only the truth. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, then by all means uh, place them at the bottom of this video. Thank you again for joining us at, here at Jewels of Truth. Let us pray. Our great and holy Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for revealing these things to us. O oh Lord, you have been very merciful to us in showing us the end of the world by these examples, the, transfiguring, the transfiguration of Christ, the, uh, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We thank you, Lord, for these examples. Help us, O oh Lord, to heed these things. Also, the giving of the law on, at Mount Sinai, how these are examples of Christ's second coming. Help us, O oh Lord, to uh, wash our garments of character and to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Help us, O Lord, give us the grace and the strength. Without you, we can do nothing. Help us to put away every sin 
and uh, every weight that holds us down to this earth. Thank you, dear Father, for hearing our prayers and granting our requests. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.